So today's video is going to be diagnosing and replacing what looks to be the fuel pressure sensor slash the high pressure fuel pump. So this is a 2015 Chevy Malibu with 2.5. It threw these codes, I prepped them here. This one, the P0089, since this GoPro does not seem to focus worth a shit anymore. Uh, it's the fuel pressure regulator, and then this was the bigger one, the P228D, uh, fuel pressure regulator, high pressure. So everything that I've read says it can be a number of things. It's either the pressure sensor that's on the fuel rail, it's the high pressure fuel pump, or it could just be the battery. I'm starting cheapest first, which is the sensor, which is like $40, and the fuel pump's like $175, and the battery's like $300. So I have to be honest, I've already filmed most of this and I was in such a foul temper last weekend and it was like 12 degrees outside and I was really, really being a dick. So I've put it all back so we can go over this together again and I'm refilming it. There are three Torx bolts here. Remove your oil cap. Okay, and then this comes right off nice and easy. Be sure to put your oil cap back on. You don't want crap getting in there, especially right now. It's raining a little bit. So we're going to put this aside in my ever-growing messy garage. Another thing we need to re probably remove is the battery cover. I removed it last time, but I didn't need to, so we're just going to leave it on for the sake of it doesn't matter. So the next thing we need to do is remove all of this air intake to get to the intake manifold because all this is under the intake manifold. So the easiest thing to remove first, these two hoses here, or these two little clamps here. Let's see if I can do this one handed without hurting myself. <clears throat> okay, so that comes off. We're gonna put that over here too. And next is this actual intake. Now it is already off, so just bear with me. I'm gonna tell you where everything went. There's one bolt here, okay, and the real pain in the ass is this hose clamp down here on the throttle body. So to get to it, I've removed this bracket that holds the heater hoses, and I just put the bolts back in where they went, didn't I? Or I put them in a bucket, I put them in a bucket. Okay, so this bracket off, and if you move these hoses out of the way you can reach down here with a stubby screwdriver and loosen that and then it pops off from this little down here now this is your P pcv pvc i never can get it right and to remove these are actually pretty simple this little let's see if i can show you don't break it because it's all brittle this little thing that sticks out and you pull that down and push it back and then this will pop off okay so let's put this out of the way okay now i put a rag down in here like i do in all my videos um let's go ahead and remove the, this the rest of the pcv pvc whatever and it's the same same thing these little these little dudes pull them off to move that out of the way Put that in the parts tray. Now we need to remove crap out of the way. Now this is something else that happened to me last weekend when I was working on this. Uh, I was removing the EVAP. Where did that clip in? That clip in right there like that. Okay, so that's this is your high pressure fuel line, okay? So we just need to get this out of the way. Now I pulled the EVAP off right here and it had this little fella in like this. It had another little fellow, which as you can see is broken. It was also on there. 
it was really cold and I pulled up on this a little bit too hard and it broke off. So I have to replace that, you don't need to. To remove these, you see this little, see that? You push that down and pull it out and that removes this. So there's our evap out of the way. Very carefully we're gonna bend this up. Move the evap up here out of the way so we can actually see what we're doing. And this is clipped on to just your normal crap, okay? You can see the little clippies where all this crap clips on. And literally just broke that on camera. Literally broke that little on camera. So another thing I removed was this bracket that holds on the uh, coolant hose. I unbolted it so we can move it up out of the way. So what we need to get to is actually down here and there's five bolts on this intake manifold and I can't find all of them. There's one, one, two, three. I think there's probably another one here and another one here and then there's one you can't see it's under it. So that's what we need to figure out now is where all these bolts are. We need to remove the intake manifold. Keep in mind all this crap is plastic and um, well we don't want to break anything like I have done twice now. So that's where we're at. I'm going to start unbolting that intake manifold. That was a real bitch. So there were five on the top of this intake manifold. So there were the three in these pockets that I already pointed out. There was one there, one there, and one here. All the bolts are retained into the intake manifold so they won't fall out. Now the two on the side, let's see if I can kind of lift this back up. So, you see that one sticking out? Bear with me here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I can do this better. There. Can you see this bolt right here? Very barely. In this shitty video I'm trying to film. It's off on the side. Like there, you can kind of see it there. I'm trying to one hand this here, there. See it? It's right there. You can get to them from the side, right here. And the same, you can see this a little bit better. This one here is pretty easy. So once you get those off, the real problem was the one on the bottom. Now you can't even see it because it's not on like the bottom of the top runners. It's actually on the bottom. This intake manifold is humongous. So I can't, I never could see it. So it's in the middle of the intake manifold and you have to feel for it. It's a blind hole. So I found pictures online. So this is the top of the intake manifold. You see this bracket, this nubbin sticking up. This is it. Okay. You see how it's at the bottom? So you're gonna have to reach your hand underneath the back of it and feel around for that. And I used a deep 10 millimeter socket and a two inch extension to get on it. And then I put another two inch extension on it with the ratchet to get it loose. All the bolts are retained on the intake manifold so you don't have to worry about them falling off. So once you get that off, all this wiring harness clips onto the top. So there were two right here this one and this one for this wiring loom and there's one of the clips and there was the other i pulled them off and then this sensor that's right here that's where this was and i unplugged it so to get those off i'm going to show you how to get those off real quick with one of the coil packs so use the same the same type of clip so you see this little red safety clip you push this red up like this okay and then my hands are so cold i don't know if i can do it then you can push down on this black part and then you see it slides off that's how that it's removed so i removed it to get all the wiring harness up out of the way now the intake manifold is going to be stuck to the engine so i just used a really big screwdriver and very gently uh put a pressure on it until it popped off now the intake manifold gasket might slip out so you want to be careful and watch that 
Okay. I pushed mine back in and I did use my compressor and try to blow the shit off. This car is very poorly designed and it trapped a lot of just debris along the top of the engine where the intake manifold goes onto the head and in these holes. It was very difficult to even get a socket to go in and get on the bolt because of the crap. So here's what we're after. That sensor right there. This is what we're after. This is the high pressure sensor that's on the fuel rail. And this is it right here. Looks like we're going to have to use, yeah, I'll get that rubber off of there so we can see what we're looking at. Yeah, let me get my flashlight so we can get a better look at it. It's going to be an absolute pain in the ass to get off, I'm afraid. I don't have my sensor in yet. Yeah, see, there we go. There, this is what we're after, is this sensor right, right here. And that's the fuel rail. And you can see how dirty all this is on the back of the head. But this is what we're after. Be careful not to break anything on this fucking intake manifold, because there are wires on it. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get a crescent wrench to uh, take this off and unplug it. I hope that plugs come off easy and swap that. Um, this is the high pressure fuel pump right here that I hope we don't have to get to. I'm really scared that it might be that. I think that's the high pressure fuel pump. Yeah, because that's the high pressure feed line that goes across the top. So that's gotta be the high pressure fuel pump. I hope we can get to it if we need to without without uh, taking all this shit off again if we have to get to it. And there's the other end of that, that EVAP hose that I broke that I'm gonna have to replace. Uh, looks like I can get to that easy enough, thank God. So I think, I think if this sensor doesn't fix it, I can do the high pressure fuel pump without taking the intake manifold off, but we're gonna see. So that's it for now. I need to wait to get that part and then we'll install. As I turned off the camera, UPS or USPS shows up. So this is the bad one I just got out. It might just be dirty, I don't know who gives a shit. All this work is for this. <laughs> this is what we're replacing. So, I showed you where it's at. I want to show you how to remove the clip because I had to kind of guess. Clever little plastic thing. Where is it? There it is. Okay. I used a crescent wrench to get it to turn. So I'm going to show you what I did here with the clip. So, this is the way you're going to find it. So, you pull this little white tab down. See how it comes out? And then you push down on it. And that's what releases the clip and it comes off I don't see any type of thread sealer I believe these are pipe threads so that's probably how it keeps from leaking so we're just going to thread this uh, little fellow back in and tighten him up oh it is a Bosch we got lucky thank you Rock Auto little Bosch we're going to put him back in tighten it down and all of this work was for this. Two days, bunch of plastic things and swear words in the cold and in the rain for this. Screw you, Chevrolet. So we are putting this intake manifold back on. I'm trying to show you where this bottom bolt is as we give a prostate exam to the back of this car. So this is the bottom of the intake manifold bear with me i'm having to watch my phone as i try to find out where this bolt is for y'all my flashlight doesn't fall off the end of this let's see so the bolt we're wanting to get to that looks to be the starter okay so the, right there you see it See if I can, right there, do you see it sticking out? This is the bolt on the top right there. I'm trying to aim the light so you can see this better. There, that's it. 
this is the bolt that we've got to reach down blind to put back in. Okay? And so you get perspective about where we are. This is where we just came from. We went straight down there and went into after that. And this is the part that I broke off the EVAP. And I've already replaced that. So I've only put these other top four bolts in uh, finger tight. And we need to start that bottom one and then we'll get some torque specs. So the torque on all the bolts is 106 uh, inch pounds. It's about eight and a half to nine foot pounds. Um, they have a little document on the order. So the middle bolt is the first and then you work your way out. The bottom one is your sixth. I don't know if that's going to focus. GoPros are not what they used to be. This thing just will not focus on anything close up to it. But you can kind of see the uh, order. So you have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And make two passes and get everything torqued down. Now, after we've got that done, uh, all I've really done is like clip some stuff back on. Like we have to put our EVAP back on. Be careful that you don't break them and slid it back on. I plugged this sensor back in, uh, tended your high pressure fuel line. Uh, be careful with these plastic lines so you don't break them like I did. Um, the next thing we have to do is put the actual intake back on that's going to be a pain in the ass because I had to take all this crap off over here to even get a screwdriver on it. But that's where we're at now. That's what I'm going to work on is getting the actual intake back on the top of this and we've got to put our hose back on for the PCV valve. When I put this back on, I did the PCV line first because it's that hard plastic and it's not very pliable. Make sure you get it clipped back on to all three. And there's that post that sticks up and this pushes down on it. This bolt goes in, doesn't need to be torqued, it's just holding this on. And now that I've finagled all of this crap out of the way to tighten this hose clamp down here, we need to bolt this wire tender back on and this heater hose tender back on. And I think, I think after that, the only thing we really have to do is put that intake hose on. And of course the engine cover, but I'm probably not gonna put that on until I start the car. Or I'll just put it on and cross my fingers just three bolts so uh, let me bolt these back on and then put that on there we go goes back together pretty easy the intake manifold is the worst part just your two hose clamps your three little Torx bolts on the top don't forget you got to remove your oil cap to put this back on I'm not going to start the car yet um, I'm going to do another video I'm going to replace the battery while I'm at it I'm hoping a combination of these have fixed this problem. I've got the current battery being topped off on the charger, and then we're going to take this out. So, if I don't record a video about changing the high pressure fuel pump, we're going to assume that changing that sensor and or putting a new battery in it has fixed this P228D fuel pressure code that we were getting. Um, if we do have a video on how to replace the high pressure fuel pump obviously these things did not fix the car <sighs> okay so i hope that helps i hope you can see the pain in the ass that this thing is and why engineers shouldn't build cars mechanics should tell engineers how to build cars because you have to take off the entire back of the freaking car to change one sensor that apparently does tend to go out so thanks for watching everybody Come on, boy! Come on! Yeah!